Floss Tube and Instagram friends. This is Kim and this is my seventh Floss Tube video. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a fair bit to share with you again today. I have a start that ended up being a finish, two new starts that I've made some pretty good progress on and progress on one of my whips. Um, I also have some stitching statistics to share with you regarding 2020 and just some general stitchy chit chat. So let's get started. First of all, I want to say thank you to a few of my friends who sent me some Christmas cards. I wanted to make sure to say thank you to Jennifer Upton. Hi, Jen. Jen sends me cards for birthday, Christmases. She's so sweet and so generous. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, then my friend on Instagram, Annette, hi Annette, you've heard me mention Annette a few times now, um, Annette California Stitcher on Instagram. And she's obviously a paper crafter as well as a beautiful cross stitcher. Um, she made this card. I love it. Thank you so much, Annette. And then she also added a skein of Jolly Holly floss. So I'm excited to put that to use and think of you as I stitch with it. Um, so then I got a card from my new friend, Daylene. Daylene is at So Grateful, S-E-W. Hi, Daylene. And I believe this is Daylene's original artwork. I know she's um, dabbling in learning to paint as well as all of the other things that she, she does crafty-wise or gardening, as I've mentioned, and baking. And, and she's just, she's delightful. So I love it. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Just so, so sweet of you. Thank you. And then my friend I've had since ninth grade. Hi, Devra. She is also a paper crafter and she made me this beautiful card. And I get, I get homemade cards for my birthday and Christmas. And sometimes I ask her just to make me extras just cause. <laughs> so, okay. So then I wanna share with you a new floss tuber. I really hope that you've all found her by now already and have watched her first video. So this is Christine at Whilst Iris Naps. She's a designer, she does um, some reproduction samplers, one of which I finally purchased, although I would purchase everything in her shop. Um, her first video was just, it was lovely, it was wonderful. It, it, just please go and, and check her out if you haven't already. Um, okay, so then I guess I can, oh, let me share my stitching statistics. I have my list here as usual, so I try not to forget anything. So I have shared that I have 47 finishes for the year 2020, but I wanted to be more specific in the fact that uh, three of those finishes were started in 2018. And so they were um, some of the bigger ones. I think Summer at Hollyberry Farm was one of them and My Lady of the Flag was another one. I can't remember the third one right now. Um, and then in 2019, I had 13 starts that carried over into 2020 and I finished all of those. Uh, and then, so that leaves, if my math is correct, that leaves 31 starts in 2020 that I also finished in 2020. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Um, then going forward, I have 10 whips that I know I will actively be stitching on and probably able to finish in the year 2021. And I thought I would share those with you in a little bit as well. So now let me go to my finish. So this is, I'm going to show you the chart because you'll, you'll you could tell <laughs> that I changed it up a bit. I didn't stitch the border. I had originally thought maybe I would stitch some of these corner motifs around, but the way I would have to move things, I just decided it looked just fine in the chart, uh, I mean, in the frame. Um, let me share this with you a little more closely. So this is what, that frame that I got at an antique mall and it had just um, a little painting in it and I took that out and I had displayed my, um, my fall piece um, at first cock crow in here. And then as I've shared, you know, I take out the, the seasonal pieces and store them. And then that way I can reuse the frames. And I don't think I'll be reusing this frame because I love it in this frame. Let me get a little bit closer. This is stitched with the uh, called for and it's NPS on the chart, but that's the same as NPI silk. And let me see the number. Um, it was 328 dark Williamsburg blue. So you can tell it's a very dark blue, even though um, I have the black on the felt on the on the frame, it looks wonderful. Um, I stitched this on 40 count autumn gold by Lakeside. And you know, I had to make a working copy, which I always make a working copy, but I really marked off as I stitched this as I went along because I was gonna get lost. And um, you know what I noticed was I believe this is my first 
monochromatic piece where I didn't have to change colors, just one, one floss color. And it was surprising how quickly that went. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed stitching just with the one color and um, thoroughly, I think that only took me a couple of days to stitch. It was two or three days, but um, I love it. I'm so happy with it. So I was able to squeak in another finish and that was one I was inspired by. I, I think it was Laura, Brenda and the serial starter, Laura. Hi, Laura. Uh, I think that's where I first saw it, but it could have just been, as I mentioned, when I was, you know, browsing through Kitten Stitcher and um, and looking at things on her chart. I, I really liked uh, Lila Studio did Anna Omen, and that was another one of the market releases that I almost have purchased many a time. And, uh, you know, if I stitch it, I, I will probably do the same thing. I will probably not stitch the entire piece, but, but maybe a portion of it. And um, I'm looking forward to adding that to the, the collection of, of birds at some point along the line. Um, anyway, so that's that one. So then, then I want to share with you my uh, two starts. Okay, so this one, I was so happy that I got started. I've been wanting to stitch it all year. And I just finally said, oh, make a fabric selection and pull it out and get a start. So this is my first GGR. This is Martha S. Scott. I love everything about this everything about this and you know they were mentioning Brenda and Laura were mentioning that the GGR charts are really really easy to read and they really are I mean as I said I make a working copy and it is just ginormous and <laughs> I have to fold it and uh, sometimes I cut off portions of the chart after I've stitched it just to make it a little less unwieldy um, but I'm stitching this on 46 count uh, vintage butter pecan by Lakeside and you can tell I'm very, very close in the margins because I only had a small piece of this fabric and I was really hoping to get another project out of the other, the top part of it. And um, so I'll be framing this very close. But isn't that beautiful? That house, that tiny, tiny, tiny house. It's so cute. Uh, I'm using, I'm pretty sure I'm using all the called for, um, is it, they're silks. I can't remember if I'm using all the, or, or, or over dyes. Oh, I'll be more specific next time. I'm sorry, I didn't do a very good job of that. But this house, I had to, I really had to be careful because there were a lot of color changes in there. Not a lot, but you know, some, and I had more than one needle going at a time so I wouldn't get lost. I love this so much and I'm very excited to pull that back out again next year. Now, if you wanna see this uh, already stitched and finished, and, and she just mentioned that she has it got, uh, framed. So hopefully she'll be posting on Instagram today with it fully framed. So this is my friend Jeannie, hi Jeannie. And uh, you can find her here on Instagram under, and I, if you check out this hashtag, it comes up in there as well. But uh, go to her actual page and she's got some beautiful things. So um, yeah, she had said, uh, when I posted it, she commented something about how she saved the house for last because it, you know, she wanted to stitch everything else and save the, that best treat for the last. And I was like, I worked my way to that thing first off. I was like, as soon as I could get up to that house, I was stitching that out. Uh, so that made me, that made me chuckle. Also, you know, if you want to see Hester Van Dorn, um, please check out Tommy. Hi, Tommy. She, um, has it finished in blue and it's, uh, like she put fabric around the outside and, it looks just terrific. So um, I know you can go and see a fully finish with the entire border, <laughs> everything complete. Um, okay, so that was that. So then I had another start and I only just had this chart to share with you recently that I had purchased. So this is Rachel Long by Needle Made Designs. And I was so excited to start it. I, it's just, I love the color of the house, the pinks in that house and um, you know, all the flowers in the border. So I just, I was, just, I, had fabric and I just had to start it, had to start it. And then I just couldn't put it away because I thoroughly enjoyed working on it. I posted when I very first began, I posted on Instagram and my friend Trisha, hi Trisha, uh, Preb409, I, she commented that she had had it kitted for a while and I said, oh, you know, I wondered about my fabric choice. So this is 40 count vintage meadow rue by Lakeside. And I said, I wonder if I chose a fabric that might be too modeled because of the fact that there is a bit of modeling in, you know, like the house and, and what have you. And she said, well, let me check and see what I kitted it up with. And she came back and said, she kitted it up with the exact same fabric. So I was like, oh yes, you know, that's a go. Uh, so again, I started uh, with the border at the bottom so that I could get the right placement, started in the middle and stitched a bit of the, the vine part just around the edge. 
and worked my way over so that I could get to the squirrel, something fun right away. And I stitched the squirrel and then I moved over to the house and stitched almost all of the house and, you know, started stitching. And I realized that all I had done <laughs> was just the outside vine and none of, none of the flowers. I thought, oh, that's a rookie mistake, Kim. You need to be stitching that border as you go along because to leave that till the very end, that would not be a good idea. So I started making myself stitch some of the flowers. They're not um, hard. The, the nice thing about this border versus say like Smith Sampler is it's, um, I don't have to constantly refer to the chart for colors and such. It's, it's, there's only like four colors in each flower. So it's a little bit time consuming because you have to go around, you know, several times, but not hard. So uh, I was very proud of myself that I actually stitched four of the flowers and it's really not, I mean, that's as wide as it's going to be. There's no more, um, it just comes up from here and up from here. And uh, so I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to get that finished next year and I'll be super excited to get back to it. And I am still keeping with, stitching with several of the silks on this. Um, I think I chose, so the the gold and the house and the um, the darker red here, and the green of the vine. Those are all, I picked the silks for all of those. And then I switched out, which is almost everything. <laughs> I switched out, this is an MPI, and I switched that out for a week's dye works. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I stitched the squirrel and the roof in that. And then I chose another, um, hmm, old barn, old blue paint, I think for the flower. Um, and there really aren't that many more colors. So I just used the, um, the DMC for the cream. And uh, so I'm super excited with that and how that's coming out. So those were my two starts. And then I pulled out my uh, Oh Joyous Day just last night and thought, you know, I really would like to get some more. If I pull it out and I get started on it, maybe I'll really get the momentum going and I'll, and I'll finish this up pretty quickly. Um, so I stitched last night, I stitched the flower here, almost, almost all of it. Obviously I left a bit there and I stitched, I started trying the satin stitch on the uh, the border to see if I'm gonna like it and I do, it's not hard. So that went well, stitched a few more strands of it this morning. And then um, I just got tired. I I'd started this other flower and I got tired, it was pretty late or early. I insomnia, <laughs> I was still not sleeping but I was just too tired to stitch anymore. So when I got up this morning, I finished this portion and added a bit more. So I left a lot of my things in the Q-snaps because I wanted to share with my friend, Anne. Hi, Anne. Uh, we had discussion about how I managed to um, get everything in a Q-snap by adding all the, uh, the batting or, or felt or whatever along the sides because I don't like to snap on top of the fabric just to avoid any distortion, um, you know, getting lines or... I iron my fabric when I first start and, and I try to keep it stored all of my projects either on hanger or um, stored flat in, in the couple of drawers that I have and I, I don't fold them back up and put them in project bags. Um, so hopefully I don't have to do a really aggressive iron uh, in, in the future, but this is just how I prefer to do it. And we were talking about how um, trying to get the Q-snap and I, a lot of times this is what I'll do, three sides and then um, I'll move it to the bottom and you know the sides or I'll move the Q-snap this way or this way depending on it. And I, most of the time I haven't had to snap over my fabric or my um, uh, the stitching and never the stitching, but sometimes the fabric and uh, most of the time I manage. So it must be the size of the projects that I'm choosing that, that so far I've been able to do that. But um, you know, this morning I was stitching upside down to get to these flowers here and, and the border. And that works really well for me as I've shared. So uh, yeah, this will get finished. I don't know that it'll get finished before the end of the year. Today's the 28th. I only have a couple days, but um, there's no rush. I'm still, I'm just enjoying it and it'll get finished by next year for sure. So that's Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. Did I share the um, thing? I don't think I did, but you guys have all seen that a million times. And that is part of the um, hashtag uh, Joy Nevertheless SAL that my friend Bonnie started. So if you'd like to follow along on that. Um, okay. So then I have, okay, so a couple of just fun stitchy things that I wanted to share with you how I store my fabric, okay? Um, this is a project roll and it's Vana the Twisted Stitchers tutorial for a project roll. And I originally did make it to store uh, active projects and such, but I discovered, like I said, I like to store them flat in drawers or on hanger in my closet. And I have now since used this for my fabric because I don't like to keep my fabric folded. You know, it'll come in the, in the bags and I immediately um, unfold it, lay it flat. And this is, you know, the larger pieces are in this project roll. And I normally stitch on 40 and 36 count. So I have all of my 
you know, 40 and 36 count in this here, I do have some uh, 32, um, very the, the smaller pieces. A lot of times I'll get, you know, the sample pieces, like say you can get a smaller piece to try the color um, if I'm one, two, three stitch. Um, and I, I, it's just a good way to see if it's something you want to get a bigger piece of when you could get a bigger piece of fabric. And I have those stored just flat and folded over with some material to keep them safe from dust and such. But what I like about the project roll and the way I store my fabric, first of all, I only have like two drawers and they're taken up by my um, whips. But I like that I can grab the fabric roll and take it to the bed, you know, lay, lay everything out on, on the bed or lay everything out on the big table. And then I have all my fabric easily accessible and I can just flip all through it. And, and I only have, I mean, that's pretty much all I have, it, which that's a lot. I have, I have a, a decent amount of fabric. So um, I'm very happy with the way that I can make it mobile that way as I'm kidding projects up. So that works for me. Then this one, you know, a lot of you, you this is not going to be new. A lot of us already know this, but, you know, we still have new people stitching and, and washing floss tube all the time. And that's how I learned a lot of the things. So I hope you'll bear with me while I share why this has been so important for me. And I've learned it from watching floss tube. So thank you guys all so much for sharing all of your tips all the time. So this is about where I uh, start my the first leg of my floss as I'm coming up. And not, not doing a pin stitch. This is just, you know, making a regular X, okay? Um, it's important for me. So this is your vertical thread, okay? And then obviously your horizontal thread. It's important for me to try to find the, the place that I start is always going to be what's called leaning against the post, right? Which means you want to start coming up in the corner that is next to your vertical thread going over your horizontal thread. And why it... If you haven't done this, it's not wrong. And it, it's not, you know, you don't have to start over <laughs> any of that. It's not, you're not doing anything wrong. But what is, what is important is that you recognize whether you are doing this, okay? Are you coming up here or are you coming up here, okay? So that as you're stitching, when I'm, so this is linen, two, two threads. When I'm stitching and I'm stitching on these higher counts and linen is not perfect, right? It's got slubs. It's got really tiny, thin, thin, thin um, threads occasionally. So it's not all even and like like a Joblin or um, even weave or what's the other one? Lugana or, or even an Ada, right? Um, the reason this is important is so that in the future, if you do come up and you recognize where you're coming up in the future as you're counting and you're always making sure to check every once in a while that you're still coming up next to this thread that you're not coming up in this place because you have missed one of those really skinny threads or a slub was really hard to, to figure out how to count around because that's happened to me a lot. And in the beginning, I used to get off. I'd get off one thread and I'd be like, how come I'm one thread off? And it was because, you know, I didn't know to do this. And so now when I'm stitching, I will take the time from time to time to make sure that I'm still coming up next to a vertical thread. And if you have to count, say you have to count, you know, 10 places off because you need to start a new stitch, it's a nice way to, to guarantee that you're in the right row and that you're starting in the right place. Um, so that's why I think that is so important is just recognize either you're coming up here or you're coming up here, but just it helps you check your work as you go. So I hope that made sense and I hope that was helpful. Um, okay, so that is all of that. I'm checking my notes here really quickly. So now we can go to my whips. So I've already shared all of these with you once upon a time, and I'm not going to probably remember all of the um, fabrics. So as I'm continuing to stitch them into the next year, I'll give you more detail as we go along. So right now we're just gonna quickly run through a recap of what I will be carrying into 2021. Um, so this is Isabella Johnstone, and this is a needlework press design you can get as an individual chart or you can get it on the Samplers and Antique Needlework Quarterly CD that I have shared with you several times. And I'm excited to get back to that. Um, I don't have the chart for that because that was just um, a black and white print off from the, the CD that I have. So this next one, excuse me, is, I'm gonna show you the book in a minute, but it's this chart, Peace and Plenty. And it's in the Sisters book. Whoops, it's in the Sisters Blackbird Designs. And this is as far as I got before I put this away um, and decided not to try to push for a finish for Christmas. 
although I love stitching on it and I'm be excited to get back to it, I will definitely finish this for next Christmas. Uh, let's see, then we've got Liberty Inn by Plum Street Samplers. And I will make sure that I finish this one first before I pull out any of my other patriotic stitching. This is on 35 count Confederate gray. I do know this one, it has a tag on it. So that'll be the first finish. I, and I already know the other uh, patriotic chart that I want to stitch for sure, because I've been wanting to stitch it the last two years and I, and I haven't managed to do it yet. So then this one, Mary Clayton by Hands Across the Sea samplers. I definitely will be able to have to do a few of the motifs here across the bottom. So this is Mary Clayton. And I'm just using the DMC. I changed one of the colors and I'll, I'll give you more detail on that, like I said, when I pull it out and share it as an active whip. Then this one, the Blackberry Rabbit, the Visitor. Super excited to get back to this one. And for sure, you know, in the in the spring, I'll be pulling this out to uh, to so I can have it done for the summer for sure, or the spring. Um, anyway, let's forget all the the threads here everywhere, but loving that one so much. And then we've got okay, so this is the Our Friends of the Heart Sal that my friend Bonnie and I are doing. Hi, Bonnie. And I haven't made any progress on this since I shared it with you last time. But just a refresher, this is on 40 Count Wren by Picture This Plus. So I love that one. Um, and then we've got Smith Sampler, um, which I forgot to mention, I keep forgetting to mention, I did not choose to put any over one lettering in there. I didn't change it to anything, I just didn't stitch any letters. Um, I did want to share, I'm so sorry that I forgot to look up um, to give you a, a, a thank you by name. Um, she, someone had stitched this and she mentioned on it uh, that there is an extra, um, an extra stitch somewhere in the border up here and to be very cautious. I think it was in, she said it was in the middle of the top border and it's something you couldn't fudge. So to try to be very cautious of, of that. And I know a lot of you are starting this on January 1st. So I really wanted to, to make sure to give you that heads up. So thank you for sharing that with me. And I will try to remember the next time. Uh, your name. I'll look up and try to find your name in the comments. So that's as far as I've gotten on Smith Sampler. Uh, and this is the, so see, see how this border is a lot more. It's always changing colors and where the colors add. And it's, it's so for me, I just have to really watch that I'm in the right place. Um, it's just more intricate. But I love this one. And this is the 46 count Confederate Gray. You know, I have to share. So this 46 count uh, Confederate Gray by Weeks. Um, it's not hard. It's fine. It's, I don't mind stitching on it. It's a little slower. Um, but the 46 count vintage pecan butter by Lakeside, not, not at all a problem. I, I was really pleasantly surprised to see how easy that was, um, to stitch on that one. Uh, okay. So then this last one here. Oh, I forgot. So this is, uh, I think those are all of my whips. Were those 10? Did I show you 10? I hope I showed you 10. I don't have anything else around me. So that must be all of them. So now I wanted to share the chart that I purchased when I went to uh, Whilst Iris Naps. I went to her, her site and I would get them all. I would stitch them all. I love them all. Um, I just decided this was one that I for sure thought it's a good size. You know, it's manageable. And I, I just, I'm really loving this um, shape uh, of samplers. There's, uh, there's another one I'll share with you. So this is not in color and, and please go to her site and check out so you can see the beauty of all of her pieces. But um that one I'm looking forward to starting as soon as I can make the fabric selection. You know, kidding up is not my most favorite thing ever. I just want to stitch. I don't want to pick fabric and floss and if I'm going to change something and I, I just want to stitch. Um, okay, so let me make sure I have some purchases to share. I did get a couple of uh, charts for um, my Christmas gifts from the 18 year old <laughs> I had mentioned uh, last while too. So let me share those with you first. Very excited to stitch all those pinks. Isn't that glorious? And I was, again, I forgot to look. Someone stitched this and added, was it Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher or is it my friend Lisa? Lisa Abby's Needleworks. I, Lynette always changes things. I don't think it was Lynette, but from Homesteading on the Home Front, um, I Lynette. She does that a lot, you know, wanting it to fit in a regular size frame. And so they added some of the motifs, I think on the side, or it was probably on this side 
Um, I think they added something, but I'm going to have to definitely go and find who it was because I'll probably want to do the exact same thing. But isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just so? I love that one so much. I know a lot of you have already stitched that one, but it's been on my my list for a long time. And then I, again, this one too, I've been wanting to stitch this and I just thought, oh, get the chart. That's a good start. <laughs> and this will be a nice companion piece. Um, I have the other one, you know, you've already seen it, but um, I think it'll go beautifully with this one. So yeah, super excited to have those hanging up together on my wall. Um, okay, so a couple more things. Oh, reaching my box of goodies here. Okay, so this is Ardith Designs, Amanda May. Hi, Amanda May. And she, I got this on um, Amazon. So she designed this and it is for tracking your stitching and giving a lot more detail. I noticed, you know, I have the uh, calendar, the Book of Days by Needlework Press, and I'm so excited to start putting something in that. Can it be January already? <laughs> and, uh, but it's it's not going to give me a lot of room to be very detailed and specific. And, and so I thought this will be a really good companion piece to that. So I, I'll have a, a better record of all the things. Um, and then this one. Okay, now I did not recognize that. I I know I've seen this because I watch, like I said, I watched Lynette, I'm sitting on the home front, and she just did her 2021 plans and shared this chart. So I know I've seen her share it and probably loved it. And I think she mentioned Brenda had this on her home tour, which have you all seen Brenda's home tour? Wow, right? Uh, hashtag goals. <laughs> and she said that she had this and I didn't remember it, but there was just so much to look at. So I am really, again, like I said, I like this, um, this size. So I'm really excited to, to, to see. I think I got a couple of the flosses, but um, I haven't really looked at it too deeply yet. And I was excited to have this one, Jane Southward. This will be the next one I'll probably have to, and I think Vintage Meadow Rue will, will work good on this. And I have another piece of that. So I'm going to pull that out. I haven't looked at, at the thing at all yet to, to see what it calls for, make decisions on what I'm gonna use. I'm probably just gonna use the, um, hover, hopefully it's charted for overdyes. I know it's it's charted for, for uh, silks. Um, or Jean did a silk conversion at the attic. I don't, I can't, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do the silks. Some silks, I, I won't do all of them, but some. So I'm super excited to start that one. Uh, and then, like all of you, right? We had to, we had to get this book. I love this chart here. Uh, I love everything. I would, I will stitch this one. Um, I think everybody loves the one on the back. So that was a nice addition. Okay. How have I not, now we've moved into things I would potentially like to stitch in 2021. And how have I not stitched anything out of this book? I would stitch everything in this book and I haven't started a single thing. So my friend Devin, hi Devin, uh, hoops and needles on, um, floss tube and, uh, Devin FL on Instagram. So she posted that through the year, the coming year, she's going to stitch one of these every month, I think is her plan. And I thought, Oh gosh, I really hope I can get on board with at least a couple of, of those, um, and get some stitching out of that book this next year, because it's, how am I not, uh, this one, I haven't stitched anything out. Oh no, wait, this is the one I did stitch one out of this. I stitched this one, um, out of this one. I can't, I don't think you can see it in the thing. Uh, I'm dying to stitch this one for Christmas this year. And this one, oh my gosh, everything in here, just so, so beautiful. And one more, oh, so now this one came to mind again. So I'm rewatching, I've already rewatched all of Brenda and Laura's, and now I'm rewatching Carol Saltbox Stitcher. Hi, Carol. And, you know, she started doing videos a couple of years ago. And the very first video, if you haven't seen Carol in a while, go back and watch her very first video because she does a, a bit of a home tour where she shows all of her beautiful samplers all over the walls. And, oh my gosh. And I remembered as I, as I'm, I think I'm on episode eight or something now. And I kept thinking, oh, that's right. That's why I stitched that one. That's why I stitched that one. I just, all the inspiration. And it was so much fun to go back and, and remember all of the things that uh, I have stitched because she shared them. And she was sharing this one. She just finished it on the episode I just watched. And this has been one I, you know, everybody's Brenda stitched this and, and I thought Flora, I think stitched it and, uh, it's been on the list and I, you just, I just can't get to, I just can't get to them all, but I really want to. Okay. So there's more down there, but I think that is everything. It's good for now. Anyway. Um, I had a couple, just a little recap of 2020 and, um, just a few things to share about 2020. 
So uh, it was another year of floss tube and Instagram, you know, making new friends, uh, connecting even more with ones that I had made prior and just getting inspired, um, hopefully inspiring you. Uh, it's just been wonderful. Thank you all of you for, for all of that. Um, I started my own floss tube channel, so that's been fun. I turned 57 and I decided to embrace the gray, just <laughs> can't keep up, I'm done drawing. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I was retired for a full year in April. Um, so that was, yeah, so I very much enjoyed retirement. And I celebrated my four year wedding anniversary to my best friend. Um, he's a wonderful um, father and husband and spiritual leader of our home. Uh, thank you, CD. I love you. And um, then the last one, um, you know, like a lot of us, uh, I experienced some loss. And um, my, my dear friend and my sister in Christ, Kimberly, has gone home to be with the Lord. And I just get incredible comfort knowing that I will see her again. Um, so that is all that I have to share with you about my stitching and uh, my plans going forward. Um, I, I have a couple of scriptures to share with you. And as always, I hope you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, I hope to see you again in a couple of weeks. And I just want to wish you all a very happy new year. So um, for those of you who are still with me, I did a search for the word new as it comes up in the Bible, and I found these two scriptures to share with you today, um, although there's many more. But um, this first one is a memory verse for me, and I'm sure for a number of you. So I will be sharing the New King James Version, and if you, uh, if you know this, I, I hope that you'll say it along with me. So this is going to be 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Um, this is a verse that we share with people that have come up and done a um, like an altar call. And they've come up and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we ask them just to give us a few minutes of their time. And we want to give them a Bible. We want to pray with them. We want to encourage them. And, and we share this verse with them. Um, the other one, so just one more, uh, Lamentations 3, 22, 23. Um, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And it made me think that, you know, I don't make New Year's resolutions. And I don't know what 2021 is going to look like or what it will bring. Um, but what I do know is that God is on the throne and I know that he is in control and I know that he is faithful. I thank you again, friends, just for another, um, like I said, just being with me for this and, and sharing, um, staying to share the scriptures with me and being such an encouragement. And I wish you all a very happy new year.